Well, here we are, the Sony A80J OLED TV. Chances are, if you've happened upon this review, you already have some expectations around this TV. You may know that the TV that came before it, the Sony A8H, was extremely popular, and maybe at this point you're wondering if and how this TV might be better. Or maybe you just heard through the grapevine that this is supposed to be one of the best TVs you can buy, and you're wondering if it's right for you. No matter how you got here though, I'm glad you're here because this TV does have a lot going on for it, but spoiler alert, I don't think it's right for everyone. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and in today's review I'm going to try to cover as many bases as I can. This is a TV that appeals to a pretty large audience, but also to a very specific one. Those in the know know that OLED TVs offer a certain appeal and that the Sony brand has historically provided some of the best TVs you can buy, OLED or otherwise. So we're going to dig into this TV's picture quality of course, but we'll also talk about how easy it is to use, how future proof it is or isn't, how gamer friendly it may be, and ultimately my hope is that by the end of this video, you'll know if the Sony A80J OLED is the right TV for you to buy. Before we dive into it though, I asked you all in my last video to leave me a comment about a question you would like to see answered in this review, and no surprise to me whatsoever, you came through. Now, some of your questions I anticipated, some came as a surprise, but one thing I have to say is that while I'll do my best to answer as many of them as possible, there are some I just won't be able to get to, and for that, I'm sorry. But Keep at me in the comments with your questions and I'll do my best to answer them when I can. I will say this though before we move on. A lot of you are asking questions about how this TV compares to others like the Sony A90J, the LG G1, and the LG C1, even the Sony A8H from last year. That, my friends, is why we do comparison videos where we dive into the differences among the different TVs. So stay tuned because we will be putting this TV right up next to the Sony A90J and I'll do my best to answer all those comparison questions too. I need you to keep me motivated though, so do me a favor and smash the like and subscribe buttons and hop into the comments section and let me know what you think about this video. I'm always trying to get better and I do take your suggestions seriously. Thanks for helping to keep me real. Now, let's dig into this thing. So I've been seeing some interesting questions around this TV about whether or not it's going to be good as a basic TV. And I think the reason why is because as part of the setup process of this TV, it asks you if you want to set it up as a Google TV or a basic TV. That's actually the first time I've seen that option and it makes sense, but let me directly answer the question. Yes, the A80J is just fine functioning as a basic TV without you having to use the Google TV Smart TV platform. If you wanna connect everything to an AV receiver and run one HDMI cable to the TV, or maybe you just wanna use an Apple TV or a Roku TV box instead of the Google TV platform that's built in, that's all just fine. You will wanna make sure that anything you connect to the TV is as up to date as the TV itself to make sure you're getting the best 4K signal, HDR or Dolby Vision signal, and that the TV is passing the best audio signal back to your AV receiver, etc but you can bypass the Google TV experience if you want. The next thing I wanna talk about is upscaling. This is something that I haven't talked a lot about in past reviews, but I wanna change that. Look, I know a lot of us stream most of our stuff from Netflix and HBO Max, Disney Plus, etc. but a lot of us are subscribed to cable and satellite. That's just the only way to get TV in a lot of cases. And that being the case, it's important that a TV take that 720p resolution signal, which is technically considered HD, and upscale it to look decent on a 4K screen. But that's only part of the equation. There's also something called bit depth and bit rate involved, and that has a big impact on the quality of a signal as well. And the bad news is that cable and satellite services are delivering very highly compressed, low quality signals, even now. I know, it's frustrating. So to get right to the point, Sony's upscaling and processing in general is in my opinion, the best out there. You will not find another TV brand better at taking cable and satellite TV and making it look as best as it can look. With that said, no TV's upscaling is a miracle worker. The less picture info you get in, the more digital guesswork has to be performed. And look, the bottom line is your cable or satellite TV is not going to look as clean or sharp as something you might stream from Netflix and definitely not as good as you would get from a Blu-ray disc, let alone a 4K Blu-ray. So temper your expectations a bit, but know that you aren't going to do better than a quality Sony TV at making cable and satellite TV look as good as it can.
Next, I wanna dive into overall picture quality for TV shows, movies, and sports. And along with that, I will dive into some of the measurements I got so we can nerd out on some specs a little bit. But before I get into that, I need to talk about how well this TV performs right out of the box with no adjustments at all. I am insanely impressed. As part of my testing, I set up a SpectraCal C6 light meter profiled to an X-Rite i1 Pro meter and used CalMan software to measure a series of test patterns to gauge how well a TV performs and the Sony A80J's out-of-box performance is like out of this world good. I tested the TV's out-of-box white point and color accuracy in the custom and cinema modes with the color temperature set to Expert One, and the readings I got were ridiculously impressive. This TV is so accurate right out of the box that I have to question how much value a full calibration would bring for most folks. When CalMan spits out its numbers, I'm looking for what's called a delta E of three or under. Under three is considered to be unperceivably different from a reference standard for most folks. Under two is what most folks go for when wrangling a TV closer to that reference standard, but with this A80J, I got 1.98 for white balance and 1.31 for color with the gamma right at 2.2, which is where you want it. And honestly, that's money. You can stop right there. Yes, a professional calibrator can get those error numbers even lower, and if you're a stickler for color accuracy, then go for it, more power to you. But for those of you out there that just want the best out of box performance, here it is in a relatively affordable OLED. Now let's talk peak brightness because when it comes to getting a great picture in a room with some daylight coming in and for the best HDR experience, you want a TV that can get bright when it needs to. In SDR with the peak luminance setting turned on, I got 478 nits in a 10% window. That's a standard measurement and a solid brightness for most TV content. Can it do battle with direct sunlight? Not very well. That's why folks with really bright rooms who watch during the day tend to go for an LED backlit TV. But for most watching scenarios, that's just fine. HDR though, and I think this is important no matter how dim your room is, comes in about what I expected. I got 730 nits on a 10% window and a bit brighter at 860 nits on a much smaller 2% window, which suggests HDR highlights would have some decent punch, especially on the perfect black foundation of OLED. Again, this is similar to measurements I got on the LG C1 and even the Sony A8H from last year. So no surprises on the measurement side, but Measurements don't tell the whole story. And so we need to take a step back and talk about what it's like to watch real world content on this TV. And the reason why is because Sony's processing has a lot to do with how this TV looks and how it looks better, at least in some respects, from other OLED TVs you can buy. Sony says it's all about preserving the creator's intent. I mean, the company is big on accuracy, preserving highlight detail, and making sure the picture is just as beautiful as it can be, from its perspective on the matter anyway. It's safe to say that Sony has a look they're going for. It's one that I tend to be a fan of, and it is on perfect display with this TV. The new Bravia XR Cognitive Intelligence Marketing Speak is, well, it's pure branding, but there's some real power in that processor, and I see it making all the right calls. The TV exposes detail where your eye is drawn to the image. So the fur on an animal is sharp, but the blurred out savanna in the background isn't getting over processed because frankly, that's not what you're looking at. Colors are rich and saturated, but not oversaturated, so they almost look fake. I also noticed this TV is really good at smoothing out color gradients too. You don't get much color banding on this TV with all but the poorest quality signals. And as far as motion goes, this is as good an OLED TV as I've seen. Judder from 24 FPS content is non-existent, but you will get a bit of stutter since the TV's pixel response time is instant. Now, you can minimize that with some moderate motion interpolation settings, which kind of takes away from the cinematic look, but if the stutter or flashing bothers you, just know you can get rid of it. On the whole, TV, movies, sports, they all look fantastic on this TV. Sparkling highlights, pretty solid shadow detail, although I'm always wishing for just a bit more, an absolutely stellar color. Now that leads us inevitably to the point where we need to start talking about gaming.
The good news is that the A80J has two HDMI 2.1 ports that can support next-gen consoles and the latest PC graphics cards. The bad news, though, is that the TV doesn't support variable refresh rate, at least not yet. VRR is increasingly valuable to gamers. It does a lot to provide a very smooth, clear gaming experience, especially with a lot of fast-moving graphics. But right now, the Sony A80J doesn't support it. Could that be fixed in a future update? It's possible, but I'll be honest, I feel like we've been waiting for that firmware update for a long time. I was at one point assured it was coming, and I'm sure that was the intention, but here we are, and VRR is still not enabled on Sony TV. So, while the A80J will tick most of the performance boxes on an Xbox Series X or PlayStation 5, it will not do VRR, nor can it currently pull off Dolby Vision HDR while gaming at 4K 120 hertz. And that being the case, if you want Dolby Vision for movie content through supported apps, for instance, you'll need to toggle this enhanced HDMI format selection back and forth accordingly. And I've heard from many folks already that this is considered an annoyance. So look, there are a lot of TVs that can't even do 4K 120 hertz gaming right now, I know, but we're talking about a fairly expensive premium Sony TV here, and I just wish it supported all the latest and greatest right out of the box, especially with LG nailing it with its OLEDs, which come with four HDMI 2.1 ports and offer a pretty tremendous gaming experience. So is the A80J perfect? Not quite, but it sure gets close. Is it the brightest OLED you can buy? No, it isn't, but I think it is plenty bright for most people. Is it the best for gamers? No, sorry, that distinction goes to LG right now. With those drawbacks, you might be thinking I'd be less than enthused about the A80J, but nothing could be further from the truth. This TV is gorgeous. Sony's processing is once again on beautiful display here, and paired with what OLED does best, there's just no denying this is a highly desirable TV. Those who prioritize the best picture quality above all else, those who don't need the most eye-searingly bright TV, are gonna fall in love with the A80J. This segment from Sony has been one of the most cinematically satisfying TVs you can buy in the past, and that tradition continues right through 2021. Thanks as always for watching everyone. I know I missed a few questions, but I'm going to do my best to get to most of them in the next video. And speaking of the next video, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel so you're among the first to see the next one. And trust me, you're gonna wanna see the next one. Also, hit me up in the comments and let me know how I'm doing. And as always, here's two other videos I think you might like.